Welcome to Thinking Green. Uh, you know, with uh, summer weather coming up, it seems like our weekends in London are more and more packed right now. So uh, my guests tonight are going to talk about one well, thing you really shouldn't miss among all of the events that are going on in the city uh, this weekend. Um, I'm joined today by Jean Jordan, who is the president of the New London chapter of the NAACP, and Aileen Novick, who is the site administrator for the Hempstead Houses site in New London. So welcome. Thank you. And um, we're going to talk about uh, this year's Juneteenth celebration. Um, and I guess maybe we should start out with just a little bit of background about Juneteenth and why we celebrate it. So, well, in September of 1862, President Lincoln did the emancipation. He freed the slaves by executive order, which was to take place January 2nd, 1863. Well, in Texas, they did not find out until June 19th in 1865 that the slaves had been freed. And the executive order actually reads that the slaves are freed in the Confederate states. Just the Confederate oh, states. Right. <laughs> so contrary to popular belief, not all slaves were freed, but in the Confederate states. But as I said in um, Texas, they did not find out until June 19th. And if you don't know you've been free, it doesn't do you a lot and, of and good. And there's folklore about it that, um, that the person who, the messenger who was coming to tell them in Texas had an accident on the way and passed away. So that's one reason why they didn't know. And the other one is that they knew, the plantation owners knew about it, but decided to ignore it because the war was so far away that they can get, you know, some more use out of the slaves. It was an economic decision. So we're not really sure, but we do know in 1865, the general, I think it was Granger, came yeah. to Galveston and on June 18th and then on June 19th, he, he read the announcement. So in Washington, did they know that Texas still had slaves? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Because where did most of the war take place? That's true. It was, the war was far away from them in Texas, so they could continue to go about doing what they did. I mean, even though we know there was the war in Louisiana and the Texas border was there, but it really didn't affect them that way, so they decided to keep doing what they were doing. But oh. in New London, um, Juneteenth Day started with Kente Cultural Center, did start doing Juneteenth Day, and when they disbanded, NAACP was supposed to take it over, but we had so many things on our plate that we were happy last summer when the Hempstead Houses and McKinley Winston came to us and said, do you want to start up Juneteenth Day again? And we were like, yes, let's do it. And it really seems like a, a natural collaboration, too, because although, you know, it, it originated with an incident in Texas, I mean, this is part of the history of our country. And, you know, if you think about, you know, the hist uh, Connecticut landmarks, I mean, this, this is important. And, and Hempstead Street, if I understand correctly, was a... Uh, traditionally an African-American neighborhood in, in New London for a long time. It was the center, basically, of the African-American neighborhood. Shiloh Baptist Church started there. Um, they had a Negro Welfare League was there, the, um, what we call the Hempstead Hall, the Mason's Hall, Jeff the Lodge was, they've had a church there, they had a Negro Welfare League there, they had many different organizations met there. So, and we know that many of the houses on the street were built for African Americans. So really, Hempstead House seems like a perfect location. It's the perfect location. So we have some slides uh, up from last year's celebration, and uh, we can talk about what kind of activities people can expect. And this first one does say June 11th, but there are activities going on both days at the, uh, the 11th and the 12th. Right, at, this year we decided to do Hempstead both days. House. We had planned a church service, but that fell through, so we have something else in its place. Okay, yes. we'll, t we'll talk about that. Um, so we have some slides to show what happened last year. So um, now, this looks like there, there was involvement of a lot of different groups, not just your group. 
What yeah, we'll have tables from a number of nonprofits, and that's who you see up right. front. We had people giving out information about their organizations, upcoming programs, really just to communicate what what's happening in New London right. at Juneteenth. AIC Fresh New London yep. is there. Yeah, and they're coming back this year. It's a it's a good way to let people in the community know what other organizations are doing. That's one of the things that we always do is we try and set up tables so that people can receive information. Looks like there was some. Yeah, oh. Expressione did a banner last year with the community. Um, so they had an artist come and work with people so they could you know, draw with paint, sorry, paint what they wanted on the banner. We still have the banner and we'll be doing another um, community art project this year so that everyone can participate right. and sort of leave a lasting project from the day. And these are the, the activities that are going on this Saturday, yep. correct? Yes. yes. Now what time are, are the activities going to be starting? At noon, noon, noon to four. Okay, there's the, the banner, banner in there. process. That's right. We had um, children's tables where they can color, they can draw. We had the Juneteenth Day flag. We had pictures of the Hempstead House. We also had, um, which you'll probably see in one of the slides, the children's games from colonial times. So what kind of games did children play in colonial <laughs> times? Well, you can kind of see on the table here, if you look carefully, there's um, like pickup sticks, oh. um, jump rope. There are graces, which are little hoops that you throw with, um, Sticks. sticks. And you oh, catch yeah. them on other sticks and then just that big wooden the wooden hoop, hoop that you, oh. you know, chase, chase after. Chase with a stick. Yeah, so we get them involved and you know, it's a historic day so they can try some, see what right. kids did in the past yes. and they didn't yeah. plug in or have other things to do. I hate to say it, but some of the things like pickup sticks. We played. We played <laughs> when we were kids too. Although and I someone asked me how to play and I couldn't remember. It's like, I don't remember how we did this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And to try and like pick them pick up them without up. moving without them. Yeah. This, yeah. I don't know. I guess we need a refresher. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, there'll be someone at Juneteenth who yeah. can show yes. us. Yes. 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 Those of us who need a reminder because we haven't played it in like 50 years. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. um, this is a Lion's Den dance troupe. Lillian Mariah Cook was born in New London, raised in Norwich, and this is a dance troupe that she started, I think she was like 17 years old, she's not much older now, and I love this dance troupe because usually when you see dancers, you see all one body shape, and sh this troupe, they embrace everyone, all sizes, all shapes, and they dance. They yeah. were very popular last year, mm. and they will be back this year. And here's another there picture again. that we, and it looks like a real range of ages yes. as well. Yeah, she has a website you can visit too to find out more about her dance program and I'm sure she'll have information mm -hmm. that day because she does have all different students. One of our neighbors, yeah. our children is up there in the dance room. Now is her, um, do they meet up in Norwich or down near New London? Not that any of it is that far away from each other. I think other. it's in the New London area that they meet now. That sounds great. Yeah. And here. Uh, this Mc is Mr. McKinley Winston. <laughs> McKinley is from New London, um, former Martin Luther King Scholarship winner in New London, and he is a great storyteller. And he was on our show last yes. year. Yes. Uh, and now this is also part of going to be part of Saturday. It's storytelling. It's storytelling. I'm sorry to say McKinley won't be there, but um, Eileen has other great storytellers who are coming. Yeah, it should be a good time. We have um, Adua Bundele Asante was there last year. She plays Harriet Tubman, okay. and she'll be returning to visit at the end of the day. Um, and we also have been working on a storytelling project where we ask local community members um, to join up if they had a story they wanted to tell um, that reflected the themes of Hempstead House, of courage, freedom, or justice. For all of them and so people have been studying with the Connecticut Storytelling Center it's been a joint project and they'll be um, previewing their stories a few of them on Juneteenth Day we also have Lonnie Braxton from the Norwich NAACP who will be telling some stories 
Yeah, he thinks he has some new information on um, underground railroad activities in New London. So we'll see what he has. And there was, there's already been documented quite a bit of underground railroad activity in New London. Correct? Not, New not London, really? Norwich. Oh, interesting. Yeah. New London, we have not really, we thought we had found information, but we hadn't. So I'm, I'm eager to hear what Lonnie has found. Yeah, he found a new source, he thought. So yeah. we're interested to see what he will have for us. And here are some more art activities. Yeah. And in the background, you can see the hoops, mm -hmm. the wooden hoops. That, that actually looks like it would be really fun. It's good exercise. Yeah. And then this photo actually we had from last year. And uh, so these students in these pictures are a lot bigger now. <laughs> yeah. This is our, uh, we have a youth group at Hampstead Houses, and this was the year that we really worked on theater, and so they got to portray a different person from New London or the Hempstead Houses, and um, a lot of them are still with us, so we have um, two now that are on staff from that, and two others that will be volunteering that day um, to help with the kids' activities. I'm sorry to say fun. they won't be in costume. Yeah. They won't? No. They can be if they want, maybe that'll yeah. add to the hoop, you know? I'm hoping yes. maybe we can talk them into it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say talk them into <laughs> talk it, them especially into it. yeah, because the hoop, you know, game would really be fantastic reenacted in, yeah, in the costume. Yeah, I think they'd get into that. Sure. So now we just have to convince them. We've decided yes. it's yes. a great idea. I think, I think they'd go for it. Ryder definitely. What I saw her up there, she was. So um, yeah, and she lives in the neighborhood mm -hmm. too. So. Um, the, um, so what are this year's activities? Now we saw pictures of last year's. Are there any changes or is it kind of a similar groups involved? OIC is involved this year and they will be doing food. So in the OIC parking lot, um, OIC culinary oh. students will be cooking food and you can go over and buy food from them. All proceeds go to OIC's programs, which isn't, you know, something nice. That is nice. Right. And, and, and is it going to be their culinary students who are doing that? As far as I know, yes. Um, we, we, again, we have the Lion's Den coming again. We have Ajua Bandalia Sante. She's, as we said, is going to do her Harriet Tubman. I thought she had someone new also. I'm not sure. She's doing Harriet. She's doing Harriet. Harriet's her showstopper, she yeah. said. So <laughs> she has to bring Harriet. And DJ Frank Lowe will be there all day providing um, entertainment and music for right. us. Yeah, and for our tables, we have a few new ones. We have Writer's Block. We'll have information on their summer programs. Um, Expressiones is coming back. Um, the Drop-In Learning Center. Center. The NAACP. We set out health materials, so we have brochures on different health issues within the African-American and Hispanic communities. Yep. And Chris Soto. Chris Soto's Higher Edge has been offered a table, so they should be there. And he um, does scholarships. Right. I just saw a picture of the graduates of his program this yeah. year, and it's, it was a good number, like about eight students, yeah. I think. So we hope to get out information on that. And um, I'm not, I have not heard back from the New London Public Schools yet, but we have offered them a t space because they have so many programs going on, new programs, you know, the magnet schools, that, you know, this would be a good way for them to get out more information, even though the all the schools you know lottery is over with but they can still get out information on what's going on and and things seem to be changing so fast in the new london schools it it is hard to keep up right and you know to have them at community events is a, a good way for people to know what's going on i know um you know when i was teaching preschool and things were only starting to uh go into lotteries for, right. for every school you know you educating parents about what's going on can't just be started in January when you're submitting you know your names or your children's names for the lottery right. and that's the whole reason for us to have tables with community organizations so that parents and people in the community can learn what's going on in the community if they have a question about something there might be someone there who can answer it or at least show them the you know where to go for more information 
Right, and the New London Public Library, that's yes. us. Oh. They're going to come too, because they have a lot of teen and youth events, especially during the summer, and right. so they really want to help get the word out. And they also do the passes for the state parks, yes. which and most people don't know about that. that I you don't can, know much about that. You can either. borrow a pass for the state park. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and they have them for all different cultural institutions that yes. charge admission. Sometimes it's a discounted rate, sometimes it's free, so people can check those out. You go up and you sign up ahead of time. So, mm -hmm. so really, for f families, that that's this is a, a great. great day. In, it is, and you know, I'm sure it's a great incentive for families to get library cards. That mm -hmm. it, not only can you get books, there are tons of activities at the library, but you can also access right. these passes mm -hmm. and we'll have a little quiet area with some mats where people with children can you know sit and read to their kids also yeah and the houses will be open so people can go in for tours because it's also Connecticut open house day which is um, a state sponsored where a lot of the museums um, around the state are open for free so our doors will be open so people can come in and talk to our interpreters about the sites and we do have some pictures of the Hempstead houses site and um, maybe we can start look at that. Um, you know, this is an amazing place in, in New London, and of course, thanks to uh, Benedict Arnold, we don't really have that many really right. old historic sites in, in our city. Yeah, this is currently the oldest house still in existence in New London. From we believe it was built in 1678, the left side. Yeah, so it is unique in that way that it is so old. And I have a couple pictures of the interior, and you said it'll be open so people can oh, yes. yep. Yep. see this close up and, and be able to ask questions. Yes. Last year, storytelling was done inside the house, but you, it was limited to how many people can come in, so it'll be outside the house, but you will still have access to seeing inside the houses. Right, because this year we're going to have a stage with a tent right. over it, just in case weather, and so it should be a... Yeah, you never know about weather. Yes. And the Hempstead Houses have been doing great curriculum with the um, youth of Southeastern Connecticut. Yeah, we've been trying to really um, change our education programs and make them fit better with what is expected in the classroom and that. So we've been changing up our tours and changing what people hear when they come to the houses to make it more relevant to them and more interesting. Right. They've been doing a lot on um, Joshua. Yeah. And... Yeah. It's been great because this is information that I, as a child, didn't receive. But the children now are receiving information about Joshua Hempstead and Adam Jackson, more information about their relationship. Well, that's really important. I, um, you, I've thought for a long time, you know, New London isn't a wealthy city in terms of funding. And as you know, you worked in the New London right. schools for, for so long. But there are so many other resources in town that have not always been uh, taken to full advantage right. uh, in terms of educating our students. And some of these historic sites, I mean, it's, I, I'm from Philadelphia, and it's, a, oh. it's an old city also, but when I moved to New London and learned, wow, this is a place that Benedict Arnold burned, burned down. down, it's like, wow, this is exciting. You know, it's really living history. It is, and I, I have to congratulate them on the job that they are doing with their curriculum writing. It's really ex an exciting process. I was able to one day come over and help do a field trip, and it was, like I said, it was really interesting, and I really liked it because we were given the information about Adam Jackson, who was Joshua Hempstead's slave, and that was not something that I grew up with learning that. We learned the history of the Hempstead House in school, but we did not talk about Adam Jackson. I don't even think I knew who Adam Jackson was until I was probably in high school and Sally Ryan told us. So what happened to Adam Jackson? What was his story? Oh, well, was you know what? We're not going to tell it here. <laughs> you have to come on Saturday okay. and, and maybe yeah. we'll tell it. We don't want to give away all the goodies. <laughs> okay, so... You have to show up on Saturday That's and right. get and the full, we'll tell you about Adam Jackson full story and Joshua Hempstead. About, and, 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 you know, Joshua Hempstead did a lot of writing, so we do yeah. right. have access to, to a diaries. lot of the information. Yeah. yeah. But you have to come on Saturday, and we will tell you then. Okay. So you all have to show up on Saturday. <laughs>
And we have maybe one more picture. And this is... Um, That's our stone house that was yeah. built by Joshua's grandson. Well, we think actually it was built by Acadians now is the current Acadians. thinking. Acadians. Yes. You see signs around town. They say the Huguenot yeah. house, which used to be the thinking. Now they think there was a group of Acadians that had been sort of bumped out of Canada due to religion. And a group of them came down here and it's unfortunate because the house is built one year after Joshua Hempstead died in 1759 oh. in his diary he writes you right. know everything that's going on so um, there's always been a lot of supposition about the house but we think that um, it's Nathaniel Hempstead his grandson who was a rope maker and it's his home so they're both open they're both on the same site now what kind of things are happening on the site now uh, with the Hempstead houses. There are some gardens there as well, right? Yeah, we have a community plot that a lot of the neighbors use. Um, there's usually some great tomatoes and dahlias and zinnias. Um, lettuce is coming up now. So, yeah, it is interesting. And a lot of people come over because we are a pretty large green space on that spot. So if there's yoga in the evenings, you know, the neighbors oh, wow. come there and um, use the yard. So it's good. It's an interesting and active neighborhood as well. Mm -hmm. And many of the houses well aren't as old as the the Hempstead houses but they're you know they're houses that were built in the 1800s right. most most of them now i wanted to talk a little bit before we go on to um, talking more about juneteenth about some of the other things that connecticut landmarks does and what other kinds of programs people can access Sure, well we have historic sites all over the state. So our headquarters is in Hartford. Um, we have a new main office there on South Prospect Street. So there we have the Butler McCook House um, and the Isham Terry House. And we have properties, um, a big one is in Coventry because that's the Nathan Hale Homestead. So it's not the house he was born in, that is no longer there, but it's his family's home and that's a popular one because a lot of people in Connecticut want to go learn about Nathan Hale. Um, then we have um, in Suffield, we have a home, um, the Phelps Hathaway house. Um, and we ha and they're all open for free this week and on Saturday if people want to go. And in Bethlehem, which is far to the west, um, is our last one that's open right now to the public. So there's programs throughout. If you visit our website, they all have different events. Um, Coventry has the big farmer's market on Sundays. Um, you know, there's um, Oh yeah, and that events. is actually a huge, I've been to the farmer's market and it's a huge green space as well as yes. the building. Yeah, because it's right next to the Nathan Hale Forest there. And this year they're working with the town because the community that had done the farmer's market um, retired last year. So it's a brand new start as of last Sunday with um, the town of Coventry and the Hale Homestead working together on that project. That's right. It seems to me I remember the last summer people were worried that it was yes, that the farm that was just going to come to an end. end. Yeah, it's amazing how many people go to that. It's really popular. It is. It's amazing. I've been only the, about three times, and the first time I like, where am I going? It seemed like the middle of nowhere, and then it was like a huge party once I got there. Yes, yes. So there's um, all different events. There's always tours. Most are open weekends. Some are open Thursday, Fridays as well during the summer. They all have youth events. You know, at Hempstead, we're going to do um, a lot of focus on getting more kids to the site. We have a nice grant from the Kitchings Foundation. So we have a lot of family and youth programs upcoming. And a lot of the sites are trying to do that to, you know, get more families in. Sometimes people are a little scared to go to a historic house with their children. And so we're trying to make them seem more welcoming, that there's, you know, history to be learned and in a fun way, too. So how can people find out about upcoming events? We have a website. If they go to ctlandmarks.org, um, you can go and there's an events tab and you can pull that down and see what they are throughout the state. But of course, the next event is a few days from now. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really talk about what's happening on Sunday, and I think this is the first time that I recall that it's been kind of a whole Juneteenth related weekend. I think we might be the, the first in this area to do it as a whole weekend. Norwich has always done it historically one day and we always did one day. And this year we took it to two days. We were originally planning to have a church service on Sunday outdoors at the Hempstead House. That fell through, but when one door closes, another one opens. And as we know, Memorial Day weekend had bad weather and right. there was supposed to be a peace conference. 
concert. Right. That is now going to be part of June Juneteenth wow. weekend. And it's going to happen Sunday from 12 to 3 at the Hempstead House. Oh, you know, we do a community calendar that we tack on you know, to the end of this show. And I had seen that the, uh, the Peace concert had been rescheduled. And I had seen that it was rescheduled to the Hempstead House. Yes. And I was confused. Yes. yes. Well, you know, it's a case in point yeah. of different organizations working with each other to help each other out. And that's what New London is all about. Now, there is something else going on. Um, At three, yeah. we start the storytelling yeah. project, which is our community storytellers. Um, this is a project we did with um, Connecticut Storytelling Center that was sponsored by the Department of Economic and Community Development Office of the Arts in partnership with the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition. Um, so what we did was we asked for people from the community this winter who had stories they wanted to tell, um, or wanted to learn how to tell stories in a different way to apply. It was a free program, and then they would get to work for about five sessions with um, staff from the Connecticut Storytelling Center. So we had about um, 12 to 15 people who signed up, um, and they've been going through this process with Jennifer Monroe has been our main storyteller, um, teaching them different ways to tell stories. And the stories are to tie in with um, the themes of courage, justice, and freedom, as we look at you know, all that took place at Hempstead with slavery and then abolition. So um, they are really powerful stories, I have to say, that the people who are telling them, um, and I think people will really enjoy the stories. They're going to debut at 3 p.m., and this is the first time for a lot of them to be telling these stories. And some of them are you know, personal stories of overcoming something, you know, a legacy of violence or um, you know, a troubled youth, and then some of them are just stories of historical people that did things with courage and freedom, but they're all really interesting stories, and I think it'll be a great festival of stories. Now the concert, what time is the concert? It starts noon. at noon. Oh, at noon, yeah, okay. It's Witness for Peace, Peace. I think, yeah. Yeah, and I know that uh, Hugh Birdsall is one of the people right. who is performing, and I forget who else. Yeah, they were going to go through their the list, connect. I think, and see who of the original performers good. could then make it on a Sunday instead. So, yes. And I think, I don't remember her name, the Connecticut State Troubadour, Laura. I think. Laura. Yes, and now. Yes. Yeah, uh, they were in the second reschedule announcement, so I yeah. imagine they are still on. And it sounded as though after the music, people were going to talk on the subject of you know, peace and how we can, um, I don't know, create a future that perhaps we might not have to mourn so many right. uh, people on Memorial Days to come. Right. So, uh, so really that's kind of a whole afternoon thing as well, noon to five. Yes. yes. Yeah, people can stop by and hear some of the music and then stay for the storytelling. It should be a really great, great day. day, yeah. And because it's part of that whole open house weekend, the houses will be open yeah, as well. Yeah, we'll have them open, yes. Well, there are so many things to do this weekend, but this is something people shouldn't miss. Um, I wanted to talk to Jean about uh, the local NAACP and also, I guess, the, the, the national one in, in context. So... I don't know. I don't know any history, really, about the NAACP. It's just always been there. Well, I think we're 107 years old okay, now. Okay, so of course... The New London chapter is 60 years old this year, and we're celebrating our 60th anniversary. And in doing that, we're honoring two of the women who were young people at the time who helped get the chart... Cha the charter for this chapter started. Oh. And that's Sarah Cheney, who yeah. we all know and love our Sarah Cheney, and Barbara Brown. Um, they, for their grandmothers, in order to start a chapter, you have to have 50 signatures, 50 memberships. They, for their grandmothers, walked throughout New London, and instead of getting 50 signatures, they got 85. And they are the reason why this chapter started. Wow because these two young ladies went and did this for their grandmothers. So 60 oh. years, our charter day is actually September 9th. Wow. 1956. 
Um. So on June 16th, we will be having our Freedom Fund Dinner, which is our annual dinner where we honor people in the community. And we have five honorees this year, of course, Sarah Cheney and Barbara Brown. They are our pioneers. Well, everyone is a pioneer, but they are really, truly our pioneers. We have Ernest Hewitt, our state representative, William Cornish, local businessman, Kenneth Reels, local businessman. Did I miss anyone? Nope, that's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, let's tell people how they can go and what to expect. The dinner is June 16th. It's at Ocean Beach. It's $60, and you can call 860-439-1423 or go to our website, New London naacp.org and you can find the information there now uh, it, so it isn't really just a dinner it's it, it's an um, speeches and honoring. It's speeches we have a we have scholarships that we give out from two hundred and fifty dollars to five hundred dollars local businesses give out scholarships um, Sonalis always gives out a scholarship Lawrence and Memorial Hospital has a scholarship they give out through us we also have a great keynote speaker this year, and the, and the keynote speaker, it, he fits in with us having our 60th anniversary, because our keynote speaker is Alan Cheney. Oh. Alan Cheney was a star basketball player at New London High School, went to school in Florida, then in turn ended up at Virginia Tech, and did a graduate program at High Point in North Carolina. He is a motivational speaker now. And he wow. will be speaking, and he has a great story to tell, which I'm not going to tell you now because you can come to the dinner and hear. Right. <laughs> now, is that Sarah's, Sarah's grandson? Sarah's grandson. It's one of Sarah's two grandsons. Al Alan is her motivational speaker, and Cassius is her fighter. Cassius is a um, professional boxer now, so. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And Sarah raised them through high school. So we keep trying, you know, NAACP is... A family when we say that we really truly are a family well you have a youth group too we do correct? have a youth group we have the Linwood W Bland Junior Youth Council um, they just received a $10,000 grant from the state of Connecticut so in the fall we will be putting together different um, programs within the community for um, families and youth to attend and they meet once a month, and Riona Dice is now the youth advisor. I was the youth advisor for 15 years until I got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> so do you miss being youth advisor? Um, some days. <laughs> so what kind of projects do the youth get involved in? They've been doing a lot of community service projects. We have, um, and the youth council is set up the same way as the adult chapter. They have a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Um, we also have one of our youth, Azel Morales, has a state office within the State Youth Conference. He's the second vice president in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all, they, they do forums. Recently, um, they did a youth forum in Wallingford on the criminal justice, and Azel was involved in that. Um, they've been doing, with Riona, they've done um, community service at the soup kitchen, community cleanup days, but just learning is part of what we do we're, it's not a social organization and that's an issue a lot of people have they think oh we're going to go out and we're going to have a good time and we're going to just do a lot of fun things no we're about learning and what they do learn is about civil rights they learn about advocating for themselves and they learn about advocating for others now what other programs does the local NAACP get involved in we will work with just about any organization right now we're working with the local health consortium getting information out about Lawrence Memorial Hospital and the Yale. Oh yeah, there's situation. a public hearing coming up soon. Right. And I wish I had the details so I could give them to everyone. I, I want to say it's June 27th, but I might be off by a day or so. And I believe I just got a notice today that it's going to be at New London High School. Yes. Uh, and it's an afternoon or late afternoon. I think so. Like three in the afternoon. I've been but getting bits and pieces of the information. Well, my promise to everyone out there is next week we'll have all the details. We'll make sure you get all the information. Because uh, it seems to me just today I received some updated information, right. and we didn't get it on our community calendar. We weren't sure that what we had was the final. And info. it's not about us telling people yay or nay. It's about hearing, 
everything that needs to be said, both sides, and then letting the people of Southeastern Connecticut make a their own uniform decision yeah. about it. Well, I think one of the concerns isn't, you know, that people are really against it. There's just a fear that when hospitals consolidate, that from the point of the business point of view, service not all services might not be available locally the way they were. Right. And I think we saw that. I mean, we've kind of gone off topic a little, but that's okay. But um, when Lawrence and Memorial Hospital took over Westerly Hospital, I know that a lot of their maternity services at Westerly were transferred to L and M, and people with limited transportation didn't have as easy access. Right. And I think there is some fear that that could happen here. And as the NAACP, what we do is we help get information out, both sides. We don't right. want to be biased. We want everyone to have their fair chance mm. to speak on what's going on. And then let people make their own mind up about how they feel about the situation. We're also working with um, the City of New London and another, uh, other organizations having to do with the opioid addiction. We will be having um, a movie coming up through the mm. FBI called Chasing the Dragon. We're not yet sure what date we are going to have it because we found a, we had a conflict around the original date. So we'll be meeting this week to talk more about that. Well, yeah, let me know when that will be. Just, you know, we'll get it on the calendar and try to publicize yeah. it a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, so it seems as though you are involved in just about everything. We, you know, if you call us and ask us if we can be involved and it's something that we can do, then we will come out and try and, and help. But it's about, this is our community and we all need to work together, all organizations, and that's what we're trying to do. And I respect the, the part about getting information out because, you know, we can't make good decisions if we're not informed exactly. about the facts. Exactly. So now you have an education committee too, correct? Yes, we correct? do. The education to... committee actually last week met with Dr. Rivera and he talked about what he has plans for the school system in the future. And we talked about how we can help because we have many many of our members are retired teachers. <laughs> that is true. Actually, a lot of your members are retired teachers. Let's see, the president, second vice president, third vice president are all retired teachers. And then we have some active teachers as members. So we, you know, we talked about ways in which we can help the New London public school systems. We have Don Wilson, former president in our education chair, who is mentoring at the middle school at this time. He's doing a mentoring program there, and we hope to expand it. My belief is that we, we start young and then go up, because if you don't hit them when they're young, you're going to lose them when they're older. So. And middle school seems to be just a very pivotal time. It is. And him being a black male, I think that it's great for him to go there, because we don't see enough of that, that role model. We see it in the sports figures. But we want to see it. But not in the classroom. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, you know, diversity among the, the teaching force is, is a big problem. I, I think it's. We've been having active conversations about that also. That, And I think it came up last year when Rep State Representative Martin Looney was our speaker at our Freedom Fund. And he stated basically that your infrastructure should look like your town. If your town is 80% minority, then you should have a good number of people working for your town that look like those people. And we don't do that in New London as of yet. No. We, you know, I could say the police department has always had diversity. The fire department we know has always been a hot spot. Right. We are working on that. The school system is another hot spot. And we are working on that. We see a lot of minority administrators, but we need to see minority teachers. It's the teachers that the children see on a daily basis, not the administrators. So we're working on that. Yeah, an important issue. Um, so back to the, the Connecticut um, landmarks, how can people like get involved if they're interested in, in, in doing more? Well, yeah, that's a good question because we um, at Hempstead are trying to put together a volunteer committee now um, to do programming. What we've done is we've had our youth group help us with, you know, 
giving us their interests. Like last year, they would suggest programs and we were able to carry those through because that was part of what they were doing. And we're trying to get more adults involved because we want it to be more of a community, community resource, the Hempstead Houses. Um, so if people want to be involved, we'd love to um, have people come and join that committee. Just tell us that they're interested in volunteering because there are a lot of different ways. Um, we've had people who help us with our gardens. We have a kitchen herb garden that we always need help maintaining. Um, we have people that come and do the community plots, but yeah, we'd love to have more people just come in and tell us, you know, what they'd like to see for programming. Um, you know, if they'd like to be involved in school trips, we have a lot of school trips. We're always looking for people who could help with the kids. Um, you know, we could teach them what to do, and you know, if they're interested, please come join us. We'd love that. Now, do you have a regular schedule of open hours? Yeah, for the season that we're open, this year we're open Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, and then we have special events and, you know, if people have like a group tour, they can call us and we'll book those in um, and be open for them. Now you're open for events also, right? You, they, yes. It can be rented out? Yes, of? they can. Yeah, some of our sites are quite popular. Hempstead, you can rent us out. Yep, yep. That would be a cool place to get married. <laughs> they have a great back area that's nice and flat and I think about why aren't more people using this space? Yeah, and spring is a nice time because we have all different flowering, you know, trees and bushes that really come into their own. Yeah, it is a nice green space, so. Well, I think if you don't, like, walk through the gate, you don't really know what's yes. behind it. Yeah, and we find a lot of people who just drive Bye -bye. by. They think it's just the stone house because, you know, the other house is dark and it's in the back, and so you say, oh, no. So we've gotten a lot of people who come because um, they read the book for Adam's sake. And so now they think, you know, it's this book about Joshua Hempstead and Adam Jackson that Allegra Jabon Aventura wrote. And so we have a lot of book clubs coming and they don't know what the house is or which one they're visiting. So it's really interesting to see people having a new spark of a reason to come visit us at Hempstead. And now there's a, a cost when it, isn't, um, when it isn't open house weekend, right? Yes. Um, it's generally $10 for admission, but we have all different levels. We have okay. a triple A discount, which I think is $8 for New London residents. It's always just $5. Um, and children are, you know, less. And then we have like a family rate, you know, if you bring a group. So we're always willing to work. So with it's you. pretty and reasonable. Yes. Right? And yes. And we want people to come visit to come through, you know, to see what we have to offer. And this there are really interesting yeah. stories of the people that lived there that I think you know, are interesting to hear as you go through. And now we know that it was the Joshua Hempstead house, but when did people, how long did people actually live there, like as the families? House, well, the house that's built there, um, we believe that one was built in 1678. There must have been a prior smaller house on the grounds, because I think Robert Hempstead comes in 1649. But on um, the family, the Hempstead family had that house until 1937. Anna Hempstead Branch is the last, she was a poet, but she lived a lot in New York City. She was involved in the settlement house movement, but so oh, she wow. owned the house and then sometimes she'd rent the house. And so um, it was in her will that she wants to leave it to Connecticut Landmark. So they, I mean, they had that house for a number of years. Into the 1900s. Yeah, 37 was the last year for the actual Hempstead family. And there are oh, Hempsteads yes. that we hear from that come visit. We have. Um, a group coming in June, you know, that they'll call and say they're a Hempstead descendant and they're interested in visiting, so. I think New London descendants are everywhere. We just, you know, there was a great article in, in the paper today about the Bowles family, and um, we found out that my husband, Bob, who grew up in Oregon, he's a direct descendant of the Bowles family. Mm -hmm. They. They left, you know, there was a, a, a group that left Connecticut and they went down south to Texas and Louisiana for a while and then headed up to Oregon in the Dust Bowl, Bowl days. So it's like you don't have to actually be from around here to have ancestors who grew up here. And we have a Mary Hempstead. Um, she becomes Mary Hempstead Bowles. She marries John Rogers Bowles. And she is one of the women that leave oh. the Second Congregational Church over slavery in the 1830s. And they became the Rogerines. Yes. Maybe. No, right. the Rogerines were a different group. They were a different the group. the are involved in that, but Mary was not a Rogerine. But they're oh, yeah. a very interesting group, the Rogerines. Yeah. That they was... were stirring things up. They'd work on the <laughs> Sabbath, and they'd come into the churches and make a scene, and people... 
they often got arrested. People did not appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> no, makes sense. My in-laws are descended from <laughs> <laughs> some well-meaning rabble rousers in yes. that group. Yes. Um, so before we only have about five minutes left, so let's recap what people can when people can come this uh, weekend to participate in Juneteenth. Saturday from noon to four. We will be at the Hempstead House, and Sunday from noon to five? Yes, noon to three is the Witness for Peace three, concert, okay. and then brief transition, then over to storytelling from three to five p.m. So there's a lot to do. Yes. We encourage people to come by. You can come for both well, days face. and see something yeah. different, which is good. Really, this, it, it's really too bad. I'm traveling this weekend, which is sad because We will take pictures. <laughs> <That's right>. Good, <laughs> it, it won't be the same as being there. But um, there's just so much going on this weekend. It's just a great weekend to be in New London. Well, um, thank you to both of you, Jean and Eileen. Um, people uh, can find out more at ctlandmarks.org for the Hempstead House. Yes, and if you go to the, our Facebook page, too, we always oh. have that well updated. So if you just go in and type in Hempstead Houses, we have an events page. We have oh, pictures. Good new research, always interesting things going up there. And New London, NAACP.org. Or our Facebook pages. Or also, for information about everything you're, that you have coming up over the next. Right, our dinner, and more information about Juneteenth Day. Yeah, and the dinners are fantastic. I've gone to them in the past, and they're pretty inspiring. Thank you, and Ocean Beach does a great job. They do. And uh, yes, it's delicious and inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, thank you. Um, next week, um, I want to let people know um, our um, guest will be Alan Bryson. And uh, he and his wife have a uh, business that they sell things made of industrial hemp. Now, I don't know oh. if Hempstead was ever used for growing industrial hemp, but it seems like kind of a, a, a smooth transition that, um, so we're going to talk about the economic potentials of industrial hemp and the, um, the new industry that's starting in Connecticut and around the country to promote, uh, promote industrial hemp. So um, we'll see you this weekend at yeah. the Hempstead Houses and there are also things going on all over the place at the Hygienic Art Park and downtown, and it's a great weekend. So uh, we'll see you next week. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you.